This is my brief review of Yukio Mishima's After the Banquet. And it is a beautiful, very Japanese novel. And I say very Japanese for a reason. So first, the general idea. The banquet itself takes place right at the start. The whole story is essentially everything that happens after the banquet. The banquet takes place at a restaurant run by a woman called Kazu. And one of the guests at the banquet is a retired politician called Noguchi. Somehow the two end up together in a relationship. Spoiler alert. They get married. It's not really that big a spoiler. I mean, it's kind of on the back page in the blurb anyway, so don't worry about that. I don't want to say too much about the details, but essentially Kazu starts getting this idea in her head that this retired politician still has one more run left in him. So she uses all of her energy, all of her determination, a lot of her money to push him and his new radical party, he was a conservative before, now a radical, to try and win in a local election. And that's what takes up most of the rest of the story. So it's definitely very good. I mean, it's Yukio Mishima, so I mean, you can't go too far wrong with this. It's a more serious book in many ways than The Sailor Who Fell From Grace with the Sea, um, which I think is just one of the most incredible books ever written. This is not of the same order, and yet it's right up there anyway, because it approaches a different aspect of life in Japan. And this is why I say it's a most Japanese book. So what do I mean by that? Well, there's this idea that I think is kind of really present in Japanese society and certainly around the time that this book was written. The idea of masks, that you wear a mask in public. You take off that mask to reveal the mask over your face for the people closest to you. And underneath that is the face that you save for yourself. Now, of course, in real life, if this is true, then most people have no way of knowing what that central mask is for anybody else. That's the whole point of it. The art of fiction, really, is the revelation of the hidden, revealing what we can't see for ourselves. So we see more into Kazu, her heart, her real face, than we would ever dream to do so elsewhere. But the whole story relies on the clash that comes between those different masks. The clash that comes between what is said and what is not said. What we do and what we should do in any given situation. So really to get into the Japanese mindset of things, this is one of the best books that you could read. And it still applies in every other society you can think of as well. The politicking at the heart of this story probably goes on in any culture that you care to look at. So. I read it really quickly. I, I read, what was it that Mishima wrote? The Temple of the Golden Pavilion, something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. Didn't like it so much because it seemed to go a little bit too deep into the philosophy of things. Not very much happens. This gets into the characters, into their heads, behind the scenes and everything. But the story itself, the story that takes place at the heart of this about that political situation, is so fascinating that you just keep reading and reading and reading. And it only took me a couple of days to get through this on top of my otherwise busy schedule anyway. So absolutely fascinating book, massively recommended. If you like Mishima, you will like this book as well. Okay, there you go. A relatively brief review. Thank you very much for watching. Keep reading.